Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com. Today we're going to be learning Aura Lee, which is a beautiful melody, and it's actually a perfect piece for someone who really wants to start getting into fingerstyle playing, you know, playing chord melody. Uh, if you're new to chord melody, it's as the name implies, you're playing the chord plus the melody at the same time. So a lot of fun, and it's kind of like that next level of ukulele playing. So this song is actually one of the performance pieces in our fingerstyle course. So if you guys click this little link right here, you can check out the entire finger picking concepts course on rockclass101.com. It's gonna cover three styles of playing. It's gonna cover using only the thumb for playing. It's gonna cover a three finger approach for finger picking and a four finger approach, if I don't mess up. Anyways, so there's a lot of uh, great material, a lot of exercises, a lot of performance pieces all in that course. So if you really wanna dive deep into finger style playing, definitely check out that course. All right, so let's kick into this lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna learn the entire song. If you guys want to get the tabs for this piece, just go to rockclass101.com, look for Aura Lee, and you can find the complete tabs to print off with and follow along with, as well as access to the on-screen tab viewer, which is really cool. You can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, slow it down to whatever speed, just a great asset for learning this that much quicker. So let's get started with the lesson. Since this is part of our fingerstyle course, we're gonna be talking a lot about the right hand in this lesson as well. So the beginning of the song starts off with an F to a G chord. So let's make sure we know those two chords real quick. So F is your middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string and your index finger on the first fret of the second string. So that means that we have an open third and an open first. Okay. Now G is going to be made with three fingers, and there's going to be one variation in what we're going to play, but let's make the full G real quick. So go ahead and take your index finger, put it on the second fret of string three, your ring finger on the third fret of string two, and your middle finger on the second fret of string one. So our G string will be open for this one. Now with this song, we're going to make this chord easier. We're going to get rid of our middle finger. So we actually don't need it. So that finger can just float up. So that means we only need our index on the second fret of string three and our ring on the third fret of string two. So we're only gonna play strings four, three, and two and ignore string one. So let's go ahead and jump back to the F chord and I'm gonna play just the first bar and then we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so that's what it sounds like. So I'm gonna show you guys how to count along with this song too while you're playing. If you've never counted along while playing, it looks like this. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. So it's basically just counting while you play. You're counting the rhythms that you're playing. If notation and understanding rhythms and all that stuff is new to you guys check out this lesson that i wrote about understanding rhythmic notation so it's going to give you a crash course in understanding the difference between quarter eighth note whole notes half notes and so on so a very good uh, asset now this song is great for counting with because the rhythms are very simple and it's very slow paced so it's a great song to choose if you are just starting on counting or you need to practice on counting you guys can also use a metronome because a metronome will help keep you in time a metronome never misses a beat right it's perfect so with the first bar, we have all quarter notes. So we have one, two, three, four. So every note and every chord that we strum is gonna last the same amount of time. So let's go ahead and make that F chord. Our first note, we're gonna be using our thumb to hit. Our first note is gonna be the third string open. So you're just gonna pluck that note. And then from there, we're gonna use the index finger just to strum from four to two. So we're just gonna strum down and hit strings four to two. So we have open third, strumming four to two. And if you strum too far like I did right there, hit the first string, it's all right, don't worry too much about it right now. Uh, but try to get your um, strum 
to go from four to two. Now, what I use is a interesting technique. I'm gonna show you guys. I want you to watch my right hand. It's basically, I'm strumming with my index, but I'm plucking the melody note that I want to hear, which is string two. So doing this technique gives me a greater accuracy, plus it highlights the melody note, because that's the importance of playing chord melody. We want to add the chords, but we want to accent the melody note of the chord. So if I was to remove the chord and just play a, a simple melody, I'd have... Right, but if we add the chord, we get a lot prettier of a sound because it sustains into it. So again, what I do is tricky, but you guys can work on it and practice it. It's strumming with the index, and I'm basically strumming four, three, and I'm plucking the second string with my middle finger. But it has to be all in time. So four, three, pluck with the middle. So it's, it's a really tricky technique, um, but it adds a interesting dynamic to the playing. It's a real cool sound. Because it really highlights that melody note. Now, another way that you guys could do this is just to use the thumb for everything. You could go with open third and then strum four to two with your thumb. You could play this entire song with your thumb if you wanted to that would sound fine but the thing with the thumb if you only use thumb thumb has a real kind of softer sound versus you can get way more dynamic by using more fingers than only the thumb. So that's something else to point out with this tune. So let's jump back into learning it. So we have open third, and we strum four to two, and then we're gonna play open second string. So you're gonna lift that first finger up, and then put your first finger back down, and play the first fret of string two. So we have open third, strum four to two, open second, Put that first finger back down, play the first fret of string two. So I have three, strum, open two, put it back down, play string two. Okay, and if we count and play together, we have three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now we're gonna switch to the G chord. Now, there's a couple ways to play it. The way that we talked about was forming the basic G and just removing the middle finger. That's a great way to do it. You could also sub out the index finger, replace that with your middle finger. So you, it's two options, whatever is most comfortable. But a, what you guys really want to practice is going from F to that G. Remember, we don't need string one for this. So a way to practice transitioning chords would be just to play it in timing. Let's say we play half notes. We have three, four, we have strum F, two, strum G, four, F, two, G, four, and just loop it. So start really slow, and when it becomes easy, then boost your tempo, right? Start like one, two, three, four, and when you get comfortable with that, try a little bit faster, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Four, right, so just gradually speed up that tempo. So that will help form what's called muscle memory, which is switching between these chords without thinking about it and knowing where to put your fingers, how much pressure to push down and apply um, to make it sound perfect each time. All right, so for bar two, we're taking the G chord. We're doing the same concept, strum four to two on this one. So we could strum with that index finger again, or with the thumb, whatever's most comfortable, or you could try the little flashy thing that I do. And after we strum, we're gonna play string three with our thumb, and then string two with our middle finger. So we have one, two, and three, four. 
So our rhythm here is the trickiest in the song. We have quarter followed by two eighth notes. Okay, so if I count that out, I have three, four, one, two, and three, four. Again, three, four, one, two, and three, four. And you can hear that last note rings out for the remainder of the bar. So you're just gonna hold on to it and let it sustain. So again, we have G, four to two. And then we're gonna play string three, and then string two, okay? So if I play bars one and two together, now I have this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. All right, so let's move on to bar three. So bar three is a C sus four chord. So it sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. So take your index finger, put it on the first fret of string two, and we're gonna do the same concept, guys. We're gonna strum four to two for this one. So we have four to two, all open, open, first fret of string two. Okay? After that, you're gonna lift that first finger up, play the open second string, add your middle finger to the second fret of string three, and then play the open second again. So watch my left hand while I play. I have strum, open, second fret, open. So you see, I only need that index finger down for the first hit. I can lift up and I don't need it. Okay? So let's talk about the right hand for this bar. We can strum with the index from four to two or the thumb. So same stuff as before. Then we can use our middle finger to play the open second and then add your middle finger to the second fret of string three. We can use our thumb to hit string three, and then use the second finger again to hit the open second string. So I have first finger, first drum, open second with my middle finger, right? Then thumb plays string three, and then middle finger plays open two again. So not too, too hard. And the rhythm is the same as bar one, quarter notes, right? So we have one, two, three, four. So try to keep it steady. Every note lasts the same amount of time. After that, bar four is very simple. We're going back to the F chord and we're strumming four to two and holding it out for the entire bar. So it lasts an entire whole note. So you have one, two, three, four. Okay, so if I play bar three and four together, I have this, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, so now let's try bars one through four all the way. So we have three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Four. So a great way to practice, guys, is just to take one or two bars at a time. So just work on bar one. You can loop it. And then you can loop bar two. And then try bars one through two. Right, and loop that. And then once you get comfortable with that, try the same thing. Try bar three, bar four, and then bar three and four. And then after you get done with that, then try one through four. So a lot of times beginners will try to just play the entire song all the way through. But the most efficient way to practice is to break it into little sections and loop it. So there's actually an entire article I wrote about proper practice. So there's tons of great little um, concepts and ideas in this article. So make sure you guys check it out because it'll help you cut down the amount of time you have to practice songs to get it down. All right, so what's cool about bars five, six, seven, eight is that it's identical to what we just learned, bar one, two, three, and four. So when you guys are playing it, you're just going to literally double what you just played. So this is what we would have then. And I'll call out every single bar. So bar one. Two, three, four, and then it starts again. Bar five, six, 
7 So after that, we're into our new part. So bar nine is gonna start our new melody section. So it sounds like this. And 10. It's almost like jingle bells a little bit, right? So bar nine is uh, playing off of an F chord. This time, you're gonna strum the entire F. Okay, so we can just use our index or we could use our thumb to hit that entire chord. And we're gonna follow that up by playing the first string open two times. So I'm just gonna use my ring finger and use that to hit it twice. So I have strum and then playing the first string twice. The whole time I'm holding down the F chord. So I have strum, open, open. So the rhythm for this is one, two, three, four. So you hear that last open first string last a half note. So again, I have one, two, three, four. Okay, from here, we're going to an A7 chord, which is actually a very simple chord. So we're gonna take our index finger, put it on the first fret of string three, and that's it, the rest is open. So you're gonna hit all four, and we're doing the same thing we did in the last bar. Strum, one, one. So again, strum followed by two open first strings. Same rhythm, so we have three, four. One, two, three, four. So again, from F, which is bar nine, we have three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it was F to A7, okay? Now we're on to our next bar, bar 11. So for bar 11, we have a D minor. We're gonna make it a little bit simpler than the stock D minor is. So think of it like an F. If you make an F chord, go ahead and make an F chord, just drop your middle finger down to the second fret. So it's the same fret, but drop it down to string three. So now I have my middle finger on second fret of string three. And that's it. And I'm gonna strum three down, okay? So I could use my thumb for this one. I can go three down, and then I'm gonna follow it up by playing string four open, and then the second string, which is fretted with our index finger, right? And then follow it up by hitting the fourth string open. So let's call that one out again. We have strum three down, playing string four open, playing string two, and then string four. So simple rhythm, quarter notes, one, two, three, four. So again, so I can use thumb for three down for this chord, this D minor, then play string four with my thumb, use my middle finger for string two, and then my thumb again for string four. Okay, if I count it out and play, I have three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, from here, this is the cool part, you're going to an A chord. Move both of those fingers straight up. So same frets, but move it up a string. So watch this left hand go straight up. So I was on string two and three, now I'm on string three and four. So if I call it out, I have two, one, zero, zero. And now I have an A major chord. So check out that bar, 11 and 12. So I have three down for my strum, four, two, four, move those fingers up a string, and hit all four strings, and I have an A. And that A chord lasts the entire measure. So let me go ahead and count out 11 and 12. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So before we learn the last part, let's just recap real quick bar nine through 12. So we have all four bars for that new section. So bar nine through 12 sounds like this. Okay, so bar 13 will sound like this. All right, so what do you notice? We start out of the F chord again. So make the stock F, you're gonna strum all four strings. 
After that, you're going to play string one, open, then drop your first finger down to the first fret, play the first fret of string one, and then lift it up and play string one, open. So it's all quarter notes on this. We have one, two, three, four. So for our right hand, we can strum with the index, and then just use our ring finger to play everything else. Okay, so I have strum, open first, first fret, open first, okay? From there, we're going back to that G without the first string. And we've got that eighth note rhythm tied at the end of it, right? So we have one, two, and three, four. So a little tricky, it's a bit faster, right? So you're gonna go four to two on that G chord, strum, three, two, Right, so we can strum with the index, use the thumb to hit string three, and use the index or the middle to hit string two. Okay? So if I put those two bars together, guys, I have from F, I have one, two, three, four to G, strum, three, two. Okay, if I count out that rhythm, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay? So now we're into our last two bars. So we're going back to that C sus four chord. So remember that's the index on the first fret of string two. We're gonna strum four to two. After that, you're gonna play the open second string. So we can use our middle finger for the open second. Use your ring finger to then play open first, and your thumb to play open four. So I have strum, open two, open one, open four. So that bar together sounds like this. Okay, again, strum four to two, open two, open one, open four. And the right hand one more time. I have index for my strum, then middle finger, ring finger, thumb. From there, we're just going to play the first fret of string two. We can use our middle finger, and then we can follow it up by playing our hardest chord of this tune, which is a higher voicing of an F. So it's going to be a partial bar. So there's two ways we could play this. We're going to lay our index finger flat on the fifth fret, strings one, two, and three. And we can either use our ring finger to play eight on string one or the pinky. Pinky is going to be less of a stretch, but it's going to be harder because your pinky is the weakest finger. So you have two ways to do it, but I would practice both because they're both great ways to uh, have under your belt. So I'm not playing string four. I'm ignoring four. I've got five, five, and eight. Okay? Now, the left hand, our form for our left hand is extremely important. So check out this article that I wrote on proper left hand form. So it's going to talk about bar chords and partial bar chords in the article. So if you need to get a little bit of a recap or you've never done bar chords before, it'll cover proper left hand form for how your hand should be. So a lot of times I see with beginners, they have bad form like this, they're hugging the neck. Um, so that article is gonna talk all about form for you guys. All right, so now we have everything learned. So let's break down those last two bars, count it out, and talk about that ending, uh, the timing for the last bar. So let me take it from bar um, 15, sounds like this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four. So you notice the last bar, half notes. One, two, three, four. Okay? So if I play the last four bars of the song, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So guys, remember the best way to practice is to do one bar at a time, loop it, and then do two bars at a time, loop it. And then from there, do the next two, and put it into uh, little sections, right? Like the first four bars, 
So bars one through four is the first section, then bars uh, five, six, seven, and eight is the second section, although it's identical to bars one through four, right? Then nine through 12 is the next section, so that's technically the second section. And then the third section is the last four bars. So you guys can break this into uh, separate sections, which makes practicing so much easier and more efficient. So like on your first day, just tackle the first four bars, that's it. And then come back to this song tomorrow or the next day and do the next four bars instead of trying to do everything and one entire shot. It's gonna make it so much easier for learning. Also guys, if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, just look for Aura Lee on rockclass101.com and you can also get access to that on-screen tab viewer. And definitely check out our finger picking course because it talks about using the thumb, talks about three fingers, talks about four fingers, different styles for playing, all this finger picking stuff which is gonna help you tremendously as you grow as a player. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.